Our first question is from Soraya Graham. Can limited flexibility or range of motion inhibit gains? For example, will a reduced range of motion in a hip thrust prevent me from maximum mu muscle growth? Or will I see growth because this is my max extension? Yeah, 100% lack of mobility can inhibit uh, muscle growth. And there's a, yep. there's, a, a, there's a range of how much it impacts you. And that has to do with your how bad your range of motion is. If your range of motion and mobility is so bad that you can't, for example, barbell squat, which is the, one of the most, if not the most effective lower body exercise. So you can't do barbell squats, then you're not going to build as much muscle. There's a cascading effect. Absolutely. It. If your range of motion is limiting you by a couple inches, eh, it, it, it's going to make a small difference maybe. But studies are very clear. Lar good, long, appropriate, I have to say appropriate because I don't want people to, ch to push their range of motion past their mobility. Mm -hmm. But appropriate range of motions, if you have a, a deep range of motion, you compare it to a shallow range of motion, both appropriate, the deep range of motion is going to build more muscle and give you strength that spans a greater range, right? So if you, let's say, let's say I do a curl and I go six inches, most of the strength that I gain is going to be in that six inches. If I do a 12 inch extension, then it's going to be to the 12 inches. So more strength across a broader range and it equals more muscle. Shout out to uh, Soraya. I remember who this is. So I met her at uh, Orange Theory, God, probably four year, four plus years ago now, maybe more, five years ago now. Um, and, I, and I was helping her. She wanted to develop her glutes. <clears throat> and by the way, she's got an incredible physique already, but she was very quad dominant. And I remember watching her train inside Orange Theory and giving her some exercises to do to help that out. And definitely, what it, she lacks the depth in her squat. So she's got she's got a good form, good technique mm. uh, down to like ninety degrees or whatever. But breaking that ninety degrees and getting really good depth, uh, I think her her ankle mobility and hip mobility kind of limit her from getting that deep. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had her doing some things in the in the in the class that I would add specifically for her to help her out with uh, developing the glutes. Now, to Sal's point, um, I one hundred percent agree. I do want to add, though, that I wouldn't eliminate the hip thrust because of that, right? So just because the hip thrust is a uh, shorter range of motion, uh, I wouldn't eliminate it as a great exercise for you still to build your glutes. Yeah, it's like, complimentary. Yeah, absolutely. Still continue to do hip thrust, but in conjunction with also working on the, the depth of your squat and working on the mobility and trying to get yourself to a place where you can do a full range of motion squat. Yeah, and I think too, like, I mean, to, to play sort of the other side of it, there's unfavorable uh, movements and, and things. And, and when you're just really trying to seek like excessively like wide ranges of motion and like a lot of these like mobility guys really geek out and get into this kind of stuff. But I was uh, trying to explain to my son who I had brought up on the podcast before I was doing all the, the Russian dance where it's like <laughs> basically you're squatting your butts almost hitting the floor, but then you're jumping and he's kicking his legs out like that. And he really like hurt his knee. Uh, and, and I'm trying to explain to him, like doing all that explosive movement, you know, in that position and that kind of a lever on, on like, and your knee is going to suffer from that. Like that's not favorable, uh, for you, uh, to, you know, to, to provide strength and, and support. But, uh, obviously, you know, that's something that you kind of work up towards, but there's certain like ranges where it's like ideal, like, yes, a lower position, you're going to get gain the full amount and it's going to like translate more to your glutes. And like a lot of times, like people don't break that plane, uh, uh, and it needs and it requires more uh, ankle support and ankle mobility. Yeah, you you're, you got to train – your range of motion has to be appropriate. You have to own the range of motion. So I don't want people to listen to this and be like, oh, deeper is better. So then they go right, right. they go past what they can control. And they compromise. That, that means you're going to hurt yourself. That happens a lot. It does. You have to own the range of motion. So the idea is to train – in the largest range of motion that you own. So that's it. And then and then from there, if you want to work towards getting a larger range of motion, be careful. Use mobility and correctional exercises and don't load until you own that range of motion. I also know that Soraya was obviously she was doing orange theory, so she was big on the, you know, the circuit training type of classes. So hopefully you've eliminated those classes and you and you're doing more strength training cuz there's two other things that I would include uh, for you that we didn't talk about. Uh, good mornings uh, I would definitely include for you. And then I'd also do uh, sumo deadlifts. And then hopefully when you're doing things like hip thrusts and exercise like that, you, you're, you're able to look like you're doing it with the barbell and loading heavy. I mean, we were doing this in a class setting. So I had her like, you know, doing floor bridges with, you know, dumbbells on her mm -hmm. hips where she should be, she was strong too. So she's a very strong girl. 
she should be doing 200 plus pounds on hip thrust and be able to do good mornings probably pretty loaded too so i would focus on those three movements